Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a sci-fi comedy film called Geohazard. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The opening scene of the movie shows us an advertisement for the beautiful girl pill. The advertisement claims that the pill is one-of-a-kind medicine that will reorganize women's brain nerves and genes, turning them into the most beautiful versions of themselves. For the first year, the beautiful girl pill is sold out everywhere because of its popularity and effectiveness. Any girl who takes it instantly experiences a change in their body and face structure. Suffice it to say that the pill is very successful, if not revolutionary. However, in less than two years of use, women begin to feel the side effects of the drug. Some get severe allergic reactions, while others go brain dead within seconds. On inspection, it is found that the pill has directly affected most of the women's brains, making their frontal lobe smaller in size. Because of this, they show confusion and difficulty in doing the easiest tasks. In addition, they turn emotionally insatiable and their sense of pain and pleasure vanishes. The effects of the drug on the human brain and their genes are far worse than what the scientists had expected while creating the pill. Soon, experts find out that the pill has given rise to a virus called the beautiful girl virus that is extremely contagious. The virus is airborne but can only transfer through an infected person's kiss. Any woman infected by it turns into a zombie-like creature with an instinct to kiss every man in their way. But the worst part is that every man who gets kissed gets infected and entirely transforms into a woman. The protagonist of the movie is a young man named Kuo Kei. As the virus spreads rapidly throughout China, Kuo Kei and his friend discuss what they should do next. They receive a text from Kuo Kei's father and rush home to find a girl tied in the living room. The father says that the girl is Kuo Kei's brother who has converted into a woman because of the virus. Kuo Kei doesn't believe it and tries to check the girl's body, but the father claims that he has already checked and confirmed that it is a girl. Creepy. The girl was trying to kiss the father, so he tied her to the chair. Kuo Kei's friend says that if the infected kisses them on any part of their body, the virus will spread. Suddenly, the father feels a sharp pain in his chest. They find out that Kuo Kei's brother has accidentally kissed the father on his arm. The father falls unconscious, but just when they think he is dead, he turns into a beautiful woman. The newly formed girl tries to kiss Kuo Kei, who is happy because all he ever wanted was a kiss from dad, and has to be restrained by his friend. The two accept the fact that Kuo Kei's family is dead, and the women sitting in front of them are zombies. Hence, they leave them alone and run outside. However, they are chased by an infected woman before they can get inside the car. They get to the streets, but it is too late as the virus has now spread beyond control. The streets are filled with women who kiss all men in their sight. They try to go to the police, but they have also been infected. Soon, their phone signals are cut off and they cannot call anyone for help. The two get stuck on the side of the street surrounded by women. Quoke notices that the infected do not attack beautiful women. So, he suggests they go to the nearest clothing store inside a mall and disguise themselves. But, since they are surrounded, Kuo Kei's friend offers to distract the girls and sacrifice himself. He claims that there is no better way of dying than being kissed by multiple women. Kuo Kei's friend has a point. Moreover, he has never fallen in love, so this might be his only chance to ever get with someone. Kuo Kei's friend is depressing. Having said that, the guy jumps in plain view, attracting the infected ones. The girls kiss him as Kuo Kei runs away to the mall. Fortunately for him, the mall is completely empty and so is the clothing store. He sits down on the couch to take a rest and the time fast forwards to a year later. Kuo Kei still lives in the store, which is now trashed. The beautiful girl virus has taken over China and according to the radio, the survivors have formed camps in different parts of the country. Kuo Kei, however, lives alone in the store. He dresses up in women's clothing and wears a wig to go out and collect food supplies every once in a while. During one of such ventures, he enters a car to check for supplies, only to find a woman in the back seat. Trying to save his life, he quickly runs away, but an infected woman follows him to the store. While he checks the supplies, she attacks him from behind, but Kuo Kei is saved by a stranger at the right time. The stranger has a girl with him who surprisingly doesn't attack them. 
It turns out that she is infected by the virus, but her body hasn't mutated into a zombie, meaning that she is immune. The man introduces himself as Li Wei and the girl as Xiao Qi. Li Wei is a member of a survival camp and is on the search for survivors. On his journey, he found Xiao Qi and rescued her. Since she is the only woman in China who is immune, he is taking her to a place called the Tower, where a group of scientists has been trying to find a cure for the beautiful girl virus. Zhao Qi is an asset to humanity who can stop the pandemic. Li Wei invites Kuo Ke to the survivor's camp because it is way safer than staying at the mall. The three then go to the parking lot where Kuo Ke had parked his car a year ago. He tries to restart it as Li Wei guards them against the infected. Soon, the car starts and they make their way to the survivor's camp. Unknown to them, a man dressed as a woman follows them on a bike. He is a spy from the rival camp that robs and steals the supplies from the other camps. When they get to the base, Li Wei makes Xiao Qi wear a device in her mouth so the men would feel safe around her. Even though she is immune, she still has the virus in her body, meaning that her kiss is deadly. When Kuo Ke is alone with Li Wei, he modifies the mouth device so she could open it by herself. Then, the duo meets the Investigation Corps, a group formed by the most courageous men who go into the city to collect supplies. Their leader is Li Wei, who is now dressed as a woman. They plan to take Xiao Qi to the tower and ask Kuo Ke to stay safely at the camp. Xiao Qi, along with the Investigation Corps, leave for a convenience store nearby to collect supplies for their journey. Back at the camp, Kuo Ke finds the rival spy giving information about Xiao Qi to his camp. He senses that Xiao Qi and the others are in danger and goes to save them. Meanwhile, the Investigation Corps and Xiao Qi are attacked by the rival camp. They hold Xiao Qi hostage, but the sniper from the Investigation Corps fires at them, starting a shootout. Kuo Ke arrives at the right moment and brings Xiao Qi to a safer place. The shootout gets intense and most of the members of the Investigation Corps are killed. The only survivors left are Kuo Ke, Li Wei, and Xiao Qi. But before they can flee from the site, the rival group catches them. The leader makes Xiao Qi wear the mouth device to be safe and plans to use her for his benefit. But his plans are ruined when she takes off the device easily thanks to the modification Kuo Ke made earlier. She then kisses the leader. As he falls to the ground and starts transforming into a woman, his teammates run away, fearing the same fate. The surviving three go to their vehicle, which is now surrounded by infected women. Li Wei offers to get rid of them since he is still dressed as a girl. He kills all of them and the three continue to drive to the tower. When they drive for some minutes, Li Wei asks to get off the vehicle, revealing that he too has been kissed. Kuo Ke promises to get Xiao Qi to the tower and says goodbye to Li Wei. At night, the duo stops to rest in a secluded area. They sit in front of the fire and drink. Xiao Qi talks about her fiancé, who was killed a year ago when the virus first started to spread. It turns out that she kissed him, not knowing that she was infected. Kuo Ke comforts her and kisses her hand. Kuo Ke is into some risky business. The following day, they finally reach the tower, but are disappointed when they see no one around. The duo assumes that the tower was attacked by the infected. As they brainstorm what they should do next, a group of infected women attack them. To their surprise, they are saved by men from inside a nearby factory. It turns out that the tower is actually an old factory where a group of soldiers and scientists have gathered to find the cure. The leader of the tower, Xiao Cheng, welcomes them and introduces them to his right-hand man, Big P. I was not expecting a name like Big P in this movie. They take Xiao Qi's blood samples for further research. She then goes to her room to take a rest while Xiao Cheng shows Kuo Ke around the facility. He is first taken to the lab where Dr. Hu is looking at some blood samples. Hu is an alcoholic who has a habit of forgetting things, but he is the best of the researchers they have. Then, Kuo Ke is taken to the part of the lab where the infected girls are being kept so the doctors can study them. But the most surprising part about the facility is the room where infants are kept. Xiao Chang claims that the babies were rescued recently, so Kuo Ke doesn't think much of it. At night, everyone gathers for dinner. Dr. Hu gets hammered and reveals that to create an antidote, a chemical must be extracted from Xiao Qi's brain, and upon extraction, she will die instantly. Even after that, the antidote won't be enough to save humanity. Kuo Ke looks at Xiao Cheng in confusion and senses that he knows everything. He quickly pushes Xiao Cheng aside and runs away with Xiao Qi. 
Xiao Chang, Big P, and the other men follow them. Xiao Qi accidentally enters a room and finds non-infected women inside. It turns out that Xiao Qi isn't the only one who was infected by the virus. But before they can inquire further, Big P knocks Kuo Ke out. When he regains consciousness, he is told that the women who are immune to the virus are called the wisdom species. They have a rare chemical in their brains that will help them make the antidote. Xiao Cheng plans to use them to study the virus and create a vaccine to end the pandemic. Although his motive is good, he plans to kill the women for something that isn't even guaranteed. Moreover, he forcefully made his men mate with the captured wisdom species to give birth to the babies that Kuo Ke saw earlier. When the women die, he plans to use the babies for the antidote because they also belong to the wisdom species. Kuo Ke agrees to help Xiao Cheng with his plan for the sake of humanity, but asks to meet Xiao Qi for the last time. He meets her and tells her about his decision to help Xiao Cheng. Xiao Qi looks at him in disappointment, but before leaving, Kuo Ke tells Xiao Cheng to make the woman wear his mouth device when they are brought outside for surgery. Xiao Qi gets the hint and explains to all the girls how they can take off the mouth device on their own. The next day, the girls are made to wear pretty dresses and are brought to the operation room. They are also made to wear mouth devices that Kuo Ke has secretly modified. As the operation starts, they take the devices off and kiss all the doctors, infecting them. Meanwhile, Kuo Ke goes to the area where the infected women are kept and frees them so they can attack Xiao Cheng's men. Their plan works and the girls are finally free. They get their kids and run away from the factory while Kuo Ke stays to announce the tower's truth to survivors around China through radio. He is soon attacked by Xiao Cheng and the two get into a fight. Xiao Cheng is about to kill him, but Xiao Qi arrives at the right time and saves Kuo Ke. However, during the struggle, Xiao Qi is stabbed. At last, Xiao Qi and Kuo Ke announce the tower's truth to the survivors through the radio. They know that there is no chance for Xiao Qi to survive the injury, but Kuo Ke refuses to let her die alone. At last, they join two wires, creating an explosion to blow up the facility and sacrificing themselves in the process. Outside, the surviving wisdom species watch the place burn with their babies. The movie ends as they walk away, determined to end the pandemic with their acquired knowledge. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.